let's head down to the bottom of the garden. I'll show you what's going on down there. So like I mentioned in one of the last videos, I threw a few veg plants in the border at the bottom of the garden. We've got some courgettes there, sweet corn there. They're doing all right. Again, courgettes, they're just uh, fairly easy to grow. And we've got some coming out there. As far as the fruit trees go, three fruit trees we planted last year. Pear, plum, apple. Okay, so we had the Brayburn apples, one of our favorite apples to eat. So, and that seems to be doing all right. Victoria plum, traditional, can't really go wrong. Then we had this pear tree. Now this pear tree, I think it was called an obelisk pear. We went for all dwarfing rootstocks, but this is just doesn't seem to show much sign of fruit. All the others had at least a couple of uh, fruit on last year. Still nothing. We had blossom, but nothing on this pear. The leaves blacken, shrivel, just doesn't seem to be great. So that might need to come out next year. As far as the old apple trees, Wow, we have apples in sheer abundance. The main big cooking apple tree, which is our really old tree in the garden here, has uh, a couple of thousand cooking apples on it. The smaller ones fall off sometimes in the wind, but all that does is just lets the bigger ones bulk up more. So rather than just letting them rot and they go onto the compost or they go in, chuck into the hedge or they just rot into the grass, I'm gonna try my best to actually harvest some of them this year, freeze them down, you know, uh, and do what we can to use those. The eating apple trees, one of them drops really early, usually drops them before we eat them, and they drop into the chicken run. Um, whereas the one that you are in right now produced nothing last year and I threatened to cut it down, maybe it heard me, but I think what's happened is over the last three years since we moved here, We've been trying to thin out the apple trees and all the old trees and cut them down to a sensible size. And of course, every time you do that, you're really cutting off the fruit growth um, and you're only ever getting the first year growth, which doesn't produce fruit. So when I said that this tree was just not producing, although it has, hasn't produced that well in the last couple of years, this year it seems to have done better because we've just left it this year. So, you know, we've given it another chance. The apples are a decent size, but again, we've got to harvest them. There's no point in having fruit apple trees, uh, you know, fruiting apple trees, if we just let everything drop to the ground and rot. We may as well just have, you know, a flowering cherry tree or something. So we've got to make use. Everything's got to have its little bit of purpose down here. And we want to make sure we make the most of that fruit. One thing I must do is get some mulch or straw or something under these because I don't really want them in contact with the soil. Wow. You only have to leave... I should maybe twist them off. You only have to miss one day and you end up with some brutes like this. Even that one there can come out. Bizarrely, all the first courgettes that were on here, the yellow ones at least, they went a dark colour, shoveled up and rotted off or a mouse or something's been at that one. Whereas now they're coming, getting a bit stronger, we're actually getting some decent plants in here. Never did anything with the sweet corn, so I'm not expecting big crops from these. There was no manure or compost or anything. I mean, they're, they're bulking up, they're not too bad, but they're not as far along as they should be, and they don't have much growth on them uh, as far as the leaves go. Victoria Plum needs a bit more propping up, but there's a few on here. I'm not too fussed in the first couple of years that they don't produce lots. I'd rather they put the growth in the, in the trees but to, uh, to get bigger. But there's a few on there that we might get to enjoy before the end of the summer. And this is the Brayburn, which is a, a really nice variety. I just hope that the tree's going to manage because obviously it's a dwarf size. But I have seen some amazing dwarf Brayburns before they're just heaving so you know with some good training we should be able to get this uh, to have some nice strong branches I'll probably limit it to three and then hopefully they'll get chunky and hold the weight so there you go there's the update I guess uh, the, the aim for me is to 
produce as much as we can with as little effort as we can uh, in the healthiest way possible. So, you know, there's different priorities for different people, but, you know, with us being at home a lot of the time, it made sense for us to grow, you know, a good amount of what we can here. That includes meat, you know, the chickens, um, whilst we get eggs from the chickens as well, the last batch uh, of the meat chickens were uh, all done last week. So I, that, you will do a separate video on that. Uh, I didn't go into any detail, but I can just kind of give you the figures to show what we did, how much it cost, uh, and would we do it again or not. There are a few improvements to make. I want to get to the point where everything I grow is within the picket fence that we built. And this will be the garden farm. You know, we've got all the livestock in here. We've got all the, the, the polytunnel. And apart from the fruit trees, I'd like to just contain everything in here. Uh, more as a challenge to myself than anything, I want next year to be able to quantify what we grow uh, and how productive this little plot can be. Because um, off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure we can produce maybe two, 250 kilos of food from this area. So I'm hoping to kind of up the game next year will make it more intensive as far as ma making use of more of the space. There's so much dead space around here. We'll improve how we use the polytunnel throughout all of the seasons. And uh, and I'm just gonna keep a little notebook and just see, you know, weigh what we produce and see what we can, what we can do, what we can achieve. Uh, I don't know what the goal will be that we'll set, but you know, uh, at least a couple of hundred kilo of food would be amazing for everything from eggs and salad to you know potatoes, tomatoes and all the root veg. So if you want to stay up to date with all the projects going on here, make sure you subscribe. You can click the bell button next to subscribe and that will make sure you get notifications on all of our new posts. Also, if you want to see any particular videos, if you want anything shot in more detail, questions and answers type thing, or just a tour of any of the pr projects from the past, just let me know in the description and we'll get the camera out and try and shoot something for you. So thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.